Hi, welcome to my video. This is um, some information on the lights I use when I go car camping. I've had some people ask me the question, you know, um, and the reason they usually ask me is I'm a bit of a, what they call flashaholic uh, torch collector, so um, I've got quite a few of them. I do you know, a fair bit with them. I enjoy going out in a dark night and um, taking my light out with me. Um, so I've got, you know, quite a few in my collection uh, and I've been asked you know, a number of times now, you know, what's my favourite, what's a good one to take out, what is nice and safe, um, what will last a while. Um, so obviously the easiest one to car camp um, for inside the vehicle um, is something like your, your courtesy lamp, uh, courtesy light in here. Um, the downside with that is, of course, that you fall asleep or you go and leave it on, um, you can flatten your battery right down, uh, which makes it uh, obviously difficult to start the car, then it can cause you real grief. Um, so what I use is um, underneath the cargo net here, um, I have uh, a cob light, I'll explain what that is in a minute, but this is a nice low profile cob light. I put some tape in it to uh, to hide the the LED a little bit and it um, just diffuses it and makes it a bit softer light. Um, and in this one I'm actually using two dummy batteries as well as two uh, normal AAs. Um, so what that does is it drops the voltage down and makes it a bit gentler, um, and more gentle on the on the eyes. Uh, so that's what I'm using here. Uh, and again, it's got magnets on the back, so you can just clunk it up in place on the magnets. And bear in mind, if you do that on your internal in your, on your car, uh, it, it it you know will mark the um, the ceiling of your car, the felt material. So um, I didn't mind so much on my old car, <laughs> but obviously if you've got something that's really um, you know, new and expensive, think twice before you do that. Um, also, second thing you can do is you can now buy something like um, this little camping lamp, which has got, you know, can stand on things if you want to. Uh, and also, uh, it comes with a little hook, this one does, as a lot of them do. You can then hang that off a, you know, a door handle, um, again, off your cargo net, you know. So there's ways of using that. Uh, which is not bad. Uh, another way you can do it is literally this is great for backpacking if you you know if you don't want to take much equipment around as well as you know, car camping. Um, if you have a light like that one, you can then get something called a muffin top, or you can make one, um, which just goes on the end of it like that, and then turns it into a hanging lamp if you want to do it that way. Also, this one will tail stand, so it'll stand on a flat surface. And you can have it like a candle if you want to, but bear in mind when you do this low and medium settings only uh, because if it gets hot it will melt it so you, know, you need to use your, your common sense there and know what settings make your, your light get, get too hot so that's um, a fairly simple way of, um, of making a little lantern really uh, and lighting up the internals of your car um, I was just going to say something about LEDs um, you know modern, modern lights have LEDs in um, they are you know, different from the old incandescent bulbs. There's no filament in them, so they're they're very good. They don't if you drop them, they often will carry on working, no problem. Um, they last a lot longer. Between usually depends on the manufacturer and the quality of the light, but between 20 and 50,000 hours is the usual. Um, so that's quite good. But like anything, the LED quality um, it depends on who makes it. So, for example, some good names are Cree, um, Nishia. Um, there's also Luminous uh, and also um, Osram make some LEDs, they're all high quality ones. Um, but also it's important the circuitry around it and that will you know, denote how long it will last. It's not always just the LED life, sometimes it, it's also the circuitry around it that fails. You know, um, So it's, it's quite good to buy a, a good quality light. Um, this one is um, a, a Phoenix, this is quite an old one, I've had this for years. Any flashaholics that they will laugh at me probably. Um, this is um, LD22, and this one only does maximum power is about 215 lumens. Um, but it has some advantages, you know. Um, 215 lumens is plenty of light for me when I'm doing things. Um, as well as that, also it uh, it lasts a huge long time on s standard AA batteries or rechargeable AAs. As this one will last easily, you know, two and a half hours, no problem at all, and that's on its highest setting, which is good. Um, also, it's got a number of settings, uh, which is good. It's got um, what they call momentary 
on and off on this one, so um, you could even signal with it if you wanted to. Uh, also, it's got uh, a memory, uh, so in other words, whatever setting you've left it on, it will remember when you turn it on again. Another useful function, so you don't have to then run through all the light settings to get to the brightness you want. Uh, so that's quite good. Um, also on this one, it has um, it has a pocket clip here, if you want to clip it, clip it to your pocket. Um, it has a lanyard as well, which is quite useful. Uh, and also it has, um, if you look here, a holster it comes with, a little holster. So that's handy, and that can go on your belt as well. It has like a belt clip on there as well, which is quite nice. Um, now I've got other lights here. Um, I mean, for example, there's little ones like this little coast here, which uses a AAA. Um, for camping and car camping, especially in it, you know, when the car can get hot, I like um, AA lights. Um, you know, and I sometimes have a backup of a AAA. If I'm going out anywhere, I usually have two lights with me um, because if you can go somewhere where if your light fails, uh, it can be really dangerous. Um, so I always take two with me, uh, and this is usually the little backup one I use, or I've got other. Uh, Phoenix ones um, and other make ones too actually <laughs> um, So here for example, I'll pull this one out to show you um, This is just a Not such a well-known brand. This is just a Thorfire TGO 6S it uses one double um, Bear in mind some of the one double a lights don't last as long on the battery life because um, it, You know obviously there's not there's not so much battery there to to draw from, so this one um, will last about an hour on, on turbo, um, so that's not as long as the AA lights there as I've shown you, that one will last you know two and a half hours, no problem at all. Um, also, uh, we have some other lights here using different types of cells, so this one I showed you first of all, that uses an 18650 lithium battery. Um, and I've got a number of them here that use those sort of things. Uh, this one is FT03 by Astrolux, and this one uses 26650 battery. Uh, now the, the only thing with this is, is in a hot car on a hot day, you need to be careful with lithium batteries. Um, and especially if you're trying to charge them, you know, you want to make sure you've got good ventilation and you just don't go off and leave it. You know, um, it's really important. So um, um, I've you know, charge them okay in the car and things, but I'm always with them, I'm always making sure they've got ventilation, they're not getting hot, um, because lithium batteries will explode if they get too hot, um, or they get shorted, or they get wet, so it's important to, to keep that in mind um, if you're using any of these sort of um, lights. Um, so that's why I normally use double A's and triple A's. Um, the one light I was going to bring out was uh, one that uses four, uh, I haven't got that one, and that's a sort of coke can shaped one by Through Night. I've forgotten to bring that one out. <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, this one's an LD41. This uses four double A's and will last, um, you know, a good three and a half, four hours um, on, on double A's. And that's on the high mode as well. So, another useful one, you know, that lasts a long time when you're out and about, and especially like wild camping, where you don't want to be caught in pitch black <laughs> with that light. Um, if you do want to go down using the lithium route, um, instead of just normal AA batteries, um, you can either charge them in torch, I should have shown you that really. This one, I showed you the FT03, actually you can charge in the torch, in the light itself, uh, which is quite good. Um, I tend to like to take them out and charge them, I'm just old school really. I know that my charger is some, um, you know, very accurate and uh, it will be a bit more gentle on them, but you can charge them in, in, in the light itself. If you don't want to go down that route, you can use something like this, which is a charger which works on, um, you know, 230 volts here in the UK, or, um, you know, they do they do versions uh, that work other countries, no problem at all with the USA and everything. It also has a little socket on it there, which allows me to charge it via the car, or I've got another um, solar charger that um, was in my other video, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and that means, you know, I can just use this and put them in there and charge it up if I want to. The advantage with that is, of course, I can charge more than one simultaneously. Um, so I can charge, you know, up to four lithium batteries. And this will actually charge rechargeable AAs as well, or AAAs, so it's very useful. Bit of kit, that one, that's by Nightcore. 
Um, that one is actually, I think it's called uh, a D4, this one is, DigiCharger. Um, so that's that's quite a good way of doing it if you don't want to charge it in the torch. Um, also, you know, some people like uh, using using head torch or headlight. Uh, it's one I have here. This one is actually by Energizer. Um, this one uh, is quite slim and it has the battery in the back. It just uses one double A and that boosts the voltage up enough to, to run the LED and that's what does infrared as well. Which is quite a nice one. Um, you know, very cheap this is. You can get much better ones. Um, but I don't... I, I usually don't go for massively bright ones on head torches. Um, I just find often they just don't last long enough and also um, as soon as I turn around to talk to a friend or something, I'm blinding them. <laughs> so I go for something that's, you know, a little bit, um, you know, just reasonable brightness. This is quite a cheap energizer. Again, it's got the um, red light on it as well as the standard light. And of course, like all of them, you can you can angle these, you know, so you can get it at the right angle you want it. This one takes three triple A's. That other one, like I showed you, one double A. Um, so again, also important thing to note is beam profile. So what do you want your light to do? Do you want it to just shine on the ground in front of you and give you a nice big circle, or do you want to, do you be able to have a bit of distance with the beam, is what we call a throw. Um, so for example, this one I showed you earlier, this, this Convoy M2, which I got recently, is an incredible thrower. I mean, for a small light, I'm being blown away with it. It was incredible distance. <laughs> so um, that's my favorite light at the moment. That's the one I say you can put a, a muff, muffin top on the end. Um, and turn that into a lantern um, and you get others that are like for example uh, is that another one this one's a convoy uh, this one here uh, you see that one um, it's more of a, a mixed bag this one this one will give you a really nice um, useful beam as you can see where you are on the ground it lights your path up um, but also what this one does is it gives you a little bit of throw as well it's not bad it's very powerful, it's about 1700 lumens roughly, I think, something like that, 1700, 1800. Um, the only thing with it is that, you know, with all that power, it's, it's not a massive chunk of metal, it does get very hot on the turbo setting, so I'm often not really using the turbo setting on this. Um, and it will milk the life at your 18650 battery. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, this one is, is fun, uh, and it's a very usable light, but I tend to use it on the on the lower settings really and uh, that's where it's useful. Uh, also um, you can have you know multi LED lights uh, something you know like these sort of things which have more than one LED these tend to be less of a, a throwing light over a distance they tend to be more of a light the whole area up um, and they're, they're you know very useful light um, I know a lot of people that swear by the multi LED ones uh, and uh, you know, again, uh, there's some amazing, amazing lights out there for the money, really. Um, just going to say also, um, we talk about, you know, getting a good light. There are some amazing quality lights for, for a low price, and I'd be uh, wrong to not state this. Um, my flash shopholic friends would <laughs> not be happy, and I totally agree. I mean, things like convoy lights are extremely good quality for the money. Um, there's no, no getting away from it. Um, you know, they really are nice. Um, so uh, I've got you no know, number of those. You can get things like um, lights like Thorfire or Sofern, um, which are very good for the price. You know, nice quality. You know, um, I would say that Nightcore and Phoenix. Um, I've not got a light, Nightcore light here to show you at the moment, but Nightcore and Phoenix are extremely good quality and certainly good on their quality control. You know, I've never received a light from them that is, um, you know, got a problem. Uh, uh, but a lot of the others have been extremely good quality, so uh, very, very surprising there, really. Um, the only thing, other thing is also, um, you know, you can have a switch at the back like this one, which is a tail switch, um, and you can have a mixture, so you would turn it on and off by that, or a momentary on and off. Then you'd have something like this one, a switch on the front here, which would select your brightness levels. Um, but some other ones, like, uh, like this Convoy, or others just have one switch, a tail switch at the back. And that one will be on and off and selecting your different brightnesses. Um, bear in mind also that a lot of the lights nowadays are programmable. So you can, you've got different um, 
uh, settings that you can, I won't go too in depth with this, but you can program it to select a, um, your favorite brightness levels. So for example, in this one I've chosen 100%, um, uh, I think it's 35%, and then some lower settings. Um, but there's other ones to choose from in it. Uh, and also you on this one you can choose whether to have the strobe in that s series of settings or not. And on mine I've chosen not to have it. Um, but some people want to have strobe and SOS in there and you can select one of those settings that gives you, you know, turbo, high, medium, low, SOS, strobe, for example, or something similar. So I take two lights out with me when I'm while camping now or anything, um, just in case one fails. Um, you know, sometimes I'll take a fancy lithium light out and enjoy using that, but I've got a backup just in case I, I um, you know, use all the battery up. Um, so I th that's about it. Um, I was only going to say also that on some of the high quality lights, um, they do give you things like, um, uh, you know, um, better waterproofing, you know, IPX rating. Um, things like uh, you know drop rating so if you drop it from a meter or something like that it should survive it um, I think of anything else also you know on some of the real good ones uh, give an example on this one uh, they have square threads and by that they're chunky big nice threads um, so what it gives you then is um, you know a quality thread that will last and by the time you've done this up and taken it off 200 times you know it's still going to be good so you, you do get better quality on that but again some of the cheap lights if you know what you're looking for are amazingly good value and um, they will have square threads on as well <laughs> so you know fantastic um, so that's about it um, I'm trying to think, I can think of anything else um, I just wanted to show you some lithiums if I could so this is a or store them if you're going to use lithiums or store them in a case um, you know, don't let them get wet, don't let them short out, whatever you do, okay? Otherwise you'll have a, a firework going off in front of you. Um, so, for example, you can have a cell like this, which is what they call unprotected. Um, and I suggest you go for protected cells. Um, this one is not a protected one, actually, but um, it's similar to my protected one. They're often a little bit longer, the protected cells. So always check that it will fit in your light, and they will often tell you that um, when you buy your light, They'll say if it can use protected or unprotected cells. Protected are safer. There's no two ways about it. Um, and also, uh, you know, if you demand too much of the cell, often it will, it will shut off. Um, you know, if it gets if it gets too low on level, it will shut off. Um, so it's worth you know safety first with these sort of things, really. Um, but again, that's why I mainly use AA batteries in my lights in in here. Uh, so it's something to think about, really. You know, if you want to be Erring on the side of safety, um, or you want something that, that will throw a beam a long way. <laughs> My um, uh, flashholic friends know what I'm talking about there. Um, okay, so that's it, and I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much for watching.